All right, everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to wrap up this 240 illustration in the third and final installment of how to draw my 240SX. Okay, so let's begin. Today we're going to cover this lower grill part and the headlights. So let's start a new layer for the grill, obviously, and let's make sure that we are on the right layer here. Awesome. So what I want to do is I want to draw the highlight and the shadow that is going to make the other indent to the bumper that this grill sits on top of. Similar to like we did for the front turn signals, which is why I am using the eyedropper tool to select those same colors. Okay. So this grill is probably going to be a lot of shapes due to all of these individual rectangles. So let's start by drawing the base and we'll just assign a stroke and a fill to this. And I want to decrease the stroke down to like 0.25 of a point. Okay. So now we have grill two and that is basically so that we can start drawing all of these boxes because they're going to create a lot of paths within that layer. So start by drawing one box and then setting it up how you like with the fill color. Then you can just go through with those same settings selected and just draw each individual box. Now, like we did on the BMW where we copy and pasted a lot of the uh, honeycomb pattern, these were a little bit different and they're only four sided. So it was really easy to make each box. Now these on the sides, on the outsides, they have more of a gradient applied to them. They aren't quite as dark. So I'm gonna use the gradient dialog box while this last shape is selected and get the gradient right. So I'm gonna select each one of these points on the gradient and choose a fill color for those points on the gradient. Using the color dialog box using the color sliders to adjust those colors ever so slightly because it is kind of white on one side and then dark on the other side in the corner. So now we're going to use that gradient fill, select the, all the remaining shapes and hit gradient fill, which lies in between fill and stroke on the toolbar palette. Great. So now we'll do the same thing to the other side. We're going to draw all of the shapes and then we'll select them all and use our gradient tool to adjust this gradient and make them a little different. Perfect. So, even if you don't like it, you can go back, select all of the shapes that you want to apply a gradient to and adjust the gradient accordingly. Okay, so now I'm just going to draw these little plastic fins that make up this grill. All right, we'll speed these last few shapes up. Now the reason why I didn't apply just a stroke here is because in case I scale this drawing up really big, I don't want to worry about if I've constrained proportions or not with my stroke. So usually if I have a stroke in a document, I will convert it to an object before exporting and sending to a client. That way if they go to make it bigger or smaller, anything that is just a stroke only, uh, won't make them have a nightmare. Okay, so we're just gonna copy and paste this by dragging and then doing a flip horizontal on that grill piece that we just drew. And I'll position it as best I can while that license plate layer is still on. Uh, but we'll go back up to the layers palette and turn that off so that we can see both sides of the grill. 
of the lower grill. All right. So now I want to add a few more details to the rear view mirrors and instantly right off the bat, I realized that I forgot to draw a few of the body lines that belong on the body line layer. So I go back, I'll clean this area up a little bit and then I'll add a few more lines that uh, I might otherwise have forgotten when I was starting the illustration. So just adding a couple of these details will help me uh, reference my highlights and shadows. So now that I'm done adding those body lines, even though it's the same color, I'm going back to the shading layer and I'm going to add this shadow on the lower part of the rear view mirror, of the side mirror, excuse me. Okay, so once the shadow is drawn, I'll go back and draw a highlight. And then I want to draw another path that will sit in the middle and essentially become the, uh, the body color. So I'll have the body color, the highlight, and the shadow. So that looks okay. It looks believable enough, but now I'm going to add this final shape. So now I'm going to add this final shape and notice how this is the path of I'm creating over here and I'm not being exact. I'm going roughly around these shapes because I'm going to take my arrow tool and drag it below those two shapes that I just drew of the shadow and the highlight so that it sits above the main body uh, shape, but below the highlight and the shadow that we just drew. And that is one way to utilize layering to um, hide otherwise sloppy uh, paths that you don't want your viewer to see. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the headlight. And I'm just going to start by drawing this big black shadow part and a couple of other shadows just to get the general shape down. I don't usually start with too much detail in the lenses until I have kind of a, a rough idea of how the headlight is going to look. Okay. And now that we have a couple of different paths drawn to give that headlight some depth, we can go ahead and start working on the lens. So I'm going to go through and draw this trim panel, which will be a dark color, and then through to the highlights. So I start off by using the pen tool to create some rough shapes uh, that that's going to show basically the brightest part on this lens. And a lot of headlight work that I do is trial and error, and I'm trying to get better as, uh, as, as I practice. But even every headlight that I do, I, I approach the same, but somehow it turns out a little differently. So here I'm trying to grab the detail in all these vertical lines by drawing these crazy wonky shapes, and it's just not working out. So what I move towards is basically just drawing a single rhombus or a, or a, a diamond shape, if you will, just a four sided shape. And now I'm going to come through and I'm going to use option, click, drag to copy this shape, change its size and copy over and over and over kind of in a random pattern to create this wild uh, highlight made out of all these vertical lines. I'm liking the way that that looks. So I'm going to click and drag and copy that shape down here and same thing option click drag if you're on a Mac I think it's command click if you're on a PC but now we can randomly place all of these rhombuses in different locations and that's enough detail for me again this illustration was about trying to do less with more so that's why I decided to just repeat similar shape for that headlight uh, lens and the uh, the driver side didn't require as much detail uh, so there you have it now that we've done the grill and the headlights this illustration is pretty much wrapped up as always guys thanks so much for watching and hitting that like button I really do appreciate it I have finally launched my merch store so that you can get all of the illustrations well 
most of the illustrations that you see on my Instagram are slowly making their way over to Teespring and Redbubble so that you can get these illustrations for yourself. Also, if you see an illustration that you would like to purchase, I am making that available as well as, uh, as, well as custom orders. Uh, so feel free to reach out, email, and on Instagram. I'm trying to create more content for Patreon, kind of a behind the scenes. Uh, it is slowly getting off the ground. So I really, really appreciate it. I will uh, link um, my Patreon, my Instagram, and my merch store below. Uh, feel free to support the channel in any way that you can. If you're interested in more Adobe CC tutorials and other car-related nonsense, consider subscribing and hitting that bell. Also, don't forget to check out all the new links in the description below, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.